A story out of Egypt that I imagined really terrifying a lot of people, but especially Stugatz. Thunderstorms bringing scorpions, killed three, injured 500. Explain to me what's happening there, what I'm not understanding about scorpions and thunderstorms and how it is that you can accidentally die uh, with, you know, and, and get wounded by scorpions in a thunderstorm. Well, the, the reality is where it rained there, that area normally gets two one hundredths of an inch of rain a year. So this was totally out of the, out of the ordinary. And what happens is scorpions are arid, you know, arachnids. They live under rocks and in crevices. When the rain comes, of course, they get flooded out. And they've got to abandon that area, and they're all of a sudden crawling all over the place instead of staying under their rocks and under their little hidden tunnels. Uh, unfortunately, in Egypt, the general rule with scorpions is the smaller the scorpion, the more deadly it is. So it's kind of different than what you see with other animals. So, uh, you know, for instance, the king cobra is the largest, you know, deadly snake in the world, very deadly, the only snake that can kill an elephant with one bite. But with scorpions, the smaller the scorpion, the more deadly the scorpion. So we had literally 500 and something people bitten and hospitalized by these scorpions because they are, they are deadly. Now, three people did not die from the scorpion bites. The three people died from something else that had to do with the flooding and stuff. Uh, nobody actually died from the scorpion bites, but they were, in, you know, critical condition, and they had to get antivenin for the scorpion bites because, again, all these scorpions now have kind of crawled out from under their rocks, so to speak, because of the rain being flooded out. Ron, this almost sounds like a biblical plague. What it animal would fantastic. you be most afraid of there being a plague with? What animal would I be most afraid of? You know, when you think of plagues, you're always thinking of invertebrates, some type of insect, right? I mean, scorpions are pretty darn bad. I, I, I can't imagine the world you know, all of a sudden crawling with scorpions. The scorpions can reproduce at tremendous rates. you ever seen mother scorpions, they have like tons of babies on their backs and they could be crawling all over the place. And I've been, you know, stung by a scorpion here in Florida, which is not a deadly scorpion, but man, it lit my butt up. So it, 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 I would hate to think scorpions because they, what they do is a lot of people get stung by scorpions when they like put on their shoes at night and they leave their shoes outside because scorpions will go into shoes all the time. So people, you know, put on their, 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 sandals or whatever, and they step in and the scorpion stings them when they, their foot gets in there. Uh, so, yeah, scorpions turn up everywhere, under pillows, everywhere. So that, that would be a horrible plague. You know, I wouldn't, be as much, I wouldn't be as upset with, like, locusts. You hear about the locusts all the time. Yeah, locusts eat all of the, the vegetation and such, can cause famine, uh, but they're not going to kill you in and of themselves. As a matter of fact, people eat them. In Africa, you see them, they sell them on the side of the road. They, they dry them out, and they, they kind of fry them, and then they have them in bags, and you can buy them. So they're actually a source of protein. But scorpions, ah, no, I don't like scorpions. Ron, what's that feel like? It feels like a, a wasp sting type times 10. It just really, it's a bad throbbing sting. It feels like, you know, somebody's hitting you with a little hammer and it, just, it hurts. It hurts a lot. Can we do this, Ron, with you? Can you just list the things you've been bitten by or stung by? Can you just go through the the entire list? Uh, how many? <laughs> because it, it there's there's a crocodile, right? Or an alligator. Yes. Right. right. Crocodile. Crocodile's got me. Uh, you know, I've been bitten, but not severely by like, you know, young tigers, a bear, Um lots and lots of snakes. But the only venomous snake that ever bit me was a, uh, a pygmy rattlesnake, and it wasn't even while I was working. I was actually horseback riding, barefoot, jumped off my horse and stepped on it, and it lit me up. That was a horrible, horrible bite. Um, I've been bitten by, I, I would imagine, several types of spiders. I've never actually seen them bite me, but I've, you know, I've had the bites show up on my hand or on the back of my neck, um, just you know, crawling through forests and different types of things, environments like that, and have been bitten by them and only seen the results afterwards. So I couldn't tell you what types of spiders, but most likely spiders from all the, the symptoms that I had. Um, <clears throat> God, I've been, but, but one of my worst bites was actually a hyacinth macaw bit me in my thumb. And, 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 and that, that really hurts badly. And people think, oh, it's just a parrot. Man, these parrots are just so powerful. A parrot bite is one of the most par painful bites you can have because it, it goes down to the bone. I mean, these things, you know, they crack Brazil nuts. So you can imagine the power they have in their bills, but people look at them and say, oh, they're cute little parrots. That's not so, you know, it's kind of an embarrassing bite to admit to, but it's a horrible bite. Anybody who's been bitten by a parrot will tell you that. Uh, you know, lots of different types of birds. I mean, I, I, you know, working with birds have kind of pecked at me. Um, like I said, a lot of different types of snakes. A couple of lizards. I was bitten by a tegu pretty badly. Uh, an iguana got me pretty badly once. Um, I don't know, you know. That's about it. How many times should you have died, Ron? It's a great list, Ron. It really is. Well, <laughs> you 
No, I, 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 no, I, no, the only time I really thought I was going to die was with a hippo in Africa. We talked about that thing and with an elephant in Africa. Those are the only two times I really thought I was going to die. But they never bit me. They never even got in contact with me. But it was very close. You get what you deserve when you go horseback riding with bare feet. The only people that do that are on the cover of romance novels. It's unbelievable. Boy, when Mike. he said that, thank Good you, Mike, boy. because you seem like such a leathery Lothario on a stallion jumping off of a of a horse and with in your bare guys, feet. Guys, I, I I grew up poor. First of all, I didn't. I rode bareback. We rode bareback. We didn't have a saddle. Sometimes we put yeah. a over the shoulder. <laughs> and um, Baby. No, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. Um, I, I will. T- I will say this though. In high school, that was the best way to get a date because I have never been able to ask a girl out on a date in my life because I always was 100% Barefoot sure on a know. horse? Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is barefoot no, 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 on a no, horse no, the best no, no, way no, to no, ask no, a woman no, out on a date? Changed. No, you don't ask a woman out on a date. What I'm saying is in high school, they knew I had a horse, and girls love horses. It's just one of those things. They love uh, to go horseback riding. So when they found out I had a horse, they would say, oh, my gosh, can, can, can I come over to go riding? And it was, I didn't have to ask. I said, sure. The only thing is I only have one horse, so we have to ride double, which means, you know, you ride in front of me and I have to – or you ride behind me and you have to wrap your arms around me. It was just a great way to – A great time in your it, life, wasn't it, Ron? Blood. It was a great yeah, was, time was, in your you know, life is what you you're guys, saying. Yes. It, it was a great time in my life. It really <laughs> was a great time. Yeah, a big smile. Barefoot, look at I mean, him. Look barefoot, at him. dating <laughs> Lothario, single man, jumping <laughs> off of a horse, landing on a rattlesnake. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was not good. That was, the rattlesnake part was not good. But the girls, you know, like I said, women love horses, and women tend to really—I I don't want to say—I don't want this to come off wrong. They—they they tend to really like guys who like horses because you know it's kind of like you have some compassion. You have Wait, go on. Yeah. Wait, were you on a date when you got bit by a rattlesnake? Because no, how did that thank go? God, that would have been embarrassing. That would have been embarrassing. Okay. No, no, I was by myself. Um. It's been said that dinosaurs descend from birds. Does that mean some dinosaurs would have white meat? Also, which dinosaur would you like to eat the most? Okay, first of all, it's birds that descend from dinosaurs. And That's a fun. Yes, I would, I, I would imagine that uh, dinosaurs would produce a good quality white meat, you know, uh, much like you see in some of the, even some of the reptiles today. Uh, you know, like um, alligator produces a good quality type of white meat. Gator tail is more of a, of a white meat. Um, I, I would I would venture to try almost any of the uh, well I would I tell you what I would venture to try the herbivores not the carnivores I wouldn't want to try a T Rex I would like to try maybe a, a Brontosaurus because that would be more equivalent to uh, the herbivores which I tend to feed on today. Do you have any working knowledge of why and how we have accurate access to what dinosaurs sounded like? No. And I don't think we do have accurate access. I think this is all speculative. And I think, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I realized where they came, to, came up with the sounds for Jurassic Park when I was in Yellowstone during the rut. And elk, when the elk bugles, that is the sound of the dinosaurs that they use in Jurassic Park. It said, Wee! I can't do it because it's just, I can't. Anyway, the bottom line, when you hear an elk bugle, Listen to that and close your eyes and think of Jurassic Park in the forest. That's, oh, that's the really? Sound. I read that it was from Turtles Mating that they that they process that sound from. Really? No. Turtles Mating is more like, oh, oh, oh. That's not a dinosaur sound. The, the sounds you hear in, in uh, you know, and, and, and I take that back. Tur- turtles Mating, depending on the size, like when if it's a little, that, that, that would be a big Galapagos tortoise. The bigger the tortoise is more of like, good or, or. and then you have the little things like, you know, the Greek tortoise, and they go, hey, hey. Like that. But it's not the sounds you're hearing in these dinosaur films. When you hear like those Godzilla sounds and stuff like that, listen to an elk bugle and try to try to imagine that resonating in the echo of a forest. That's exactly where they come down. That's all speculative. All those sounds you hear, that's all guesswork. There's nothing to document that or say what, what makes that sound. Well, Ron, in Mike's defense then, dinosaurs could sound like turtles that are mating because we don't know what they sound like. Mm-hmm. It could. It could. You, you know, you're, you're right, Bill. Uh, that, that, you're absolutely right. It could. But I'm just saying it's all a guess. There is no evidence to suggest they, they haven't found fossilized vocal cords or anything like that that would suggest this is the sound that came from these animals. I- we do know that reptiles, uh, birds, are, are, can be very vocal, and they have vocal calls. They have mating calls. So we can, we can pretty you know, confidently speculate that they did make sounds. But as what those sounds were, were like, 
No, that's that's a pure guess. Actually, the internet has a pretty good archive of uh, oh, what they think some you know what there they think go, dinosaurs there. sound like. I, I right. here's the first sound that comes right. to mind. Yeah, never know. <laughs> Ron, what is the coolest thing in your house? Because Sounds I've seen healthy. I've seen skulls. He did sound healthier back then. <laughs> I I've seen skulls in your house. So you would say what is the coolest item in your house from the animal kingdom or from history? Well, for me, I have the skull that's almost a perfect skull of a 20,000-year-old extinct cave bear. And, I mean, it's perfect. I also have the skull that's almost perfect, all the dentition, the teeth, the enamel still there, of an extinct 20-million-year-old rhinoceros that used to roam the badlands of, you know, of the Dakotas. Um, so those, to me, are really incredible because these are animals that lived, you know, in, in the rhino's case, millions of years ago. And when you touch that enamel on the teeth... And I, I, I don't know, I have a very, you know, vivid imagination. I try to think, what did this animal eat? When this animal was alive, I'm touching something here from millions of years ago that roamed the United States, a, a descendant of the rhino. Um, you know, what, what did this animal see? What did it eat? What did it feel? That, that to me, is fascinating stuff. What are those worth? There it is. Just out of curiosity. Oh, here we go. Here he we wants go. to steal them. He's going to figure out what how are they to worth? steal them. We know you and wouldn't where do you sell live? them. I we mean... know that they're priceless to you. How did you get them, and what are they worth? Uh, you know, my cave bear skull, I would think, because it's in such excellent condition, it's a matched upper jaw with the, with the top, the mandible. Um, it's in perfect. I, I would think it's probably somewhere between, I don't know, fifteen and $25,000. Wow. Wow. Uh, How'd no. you get it? Enough How'd, to be a golden cane. How did you get I, I, any I, I, of these things? I, I actually tr I actually traded a bunch of other skulls that I had prepared. When I was younger, I would prepare all kinds of skulls of animals that died naturally. Nothing was shot or killed. I want to make that very uh, clear. Okay, that, That's why you don't see any, any stuffed animals or any mounted things in my house. All the things I have are animals that have died naturally, and they're just bones. <clears throat> but I think bones... Tell tremendous stories. They fascinate me. You know, I have the skulls of like hippos, rhinos, lions, tigers. I mean, I have the skeleton of a 14-foot king cobra. And when you look at that, you think, here's the only snake in the world that with one bite can kill a full-grown elephant. And I look at that, and it just, it's so majestic to me. It's so incredible. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I get these things because over the years, I prepared lots of skulls, and there's kind of a an underground of people. The, an skull. underground of dark skull people. I love that you're a skull trader. This is a legitimate secret society, not like that bullshit golden game thing. <laughs> this is a secret <laughs> society of skull traders that you're talking about, people well, who actually you, appreciate it, but you, uh, that could be sinister. If I told a person who didn't yeah. know you, Ron McGill's a skull trader, they would think you perhaps a deviant. Well, listen, you guys know my wife, Rita, and on the first time I was able to bring her to my townhouse, which I lived in at the time, when, as soon as you walk into the townhouse, the shelves were just filled with skulls, left up and down, like a whole series of primate skulls and stuff. She walked in, and I could tell by the look on her face was like, uh-oh, this was a mistake. She thought I was like into Santeria or something like that, something really weird. Um, you know, thankfully, she, she gave me a chance, and things worked out, but it was a very scary moment. She'll admit to you when she walked into my house that townhouse on our first date and I was able to bring her to the house and she just went, uh Oh, this is a problem. Ron, let's do this from the bottom up from five to one in terms of bites and bullet ants and pains that you have felt in the animal kingdom. I want to rank Ron McGill's ranking the bites, top, huh? top five bites slash pains that you have felt, wow. whether it's the macaw. It's a big list. We've never gotten to it before. I need to get a okay, pen. Hold on. Five, okay. Right? okay. Yes. Uh, I have one. Okay. Okay. The the, the, uh, the hold on one. hold on we're gonna do this dramatically and with much fanfare because this is 15 years in the making you're one of our mo most popular guests we're getting here to subject matter we have not done with you before so we want to rank the bites here and we're gonna go from five to one and I don't know where the macaw is that macaw thing sounded awful okay. but uh, let's see what we but but, but a, an an alligator seems like it would be pretty bad too uh, you said the bullet ant yeah. is terrible we've got plenty to pick uh, yeah. from here so I, I got it. I got it I got it I already got it down number five Ron okay number five would have been a, a young tiger young tiger wow. what's the backstory there uh, it was a tiger, you know, it was about a year and a half old, and uh, we were moving it, and uh, I just got a little too confident, and, um, it, you know, it bit me. It was not happy, and it bit me in, in, the, in the fat part of the palm of my hand, 
and it kind of went all the way through, and it hurt a lot. By confident, like too chummy with the tiger, thought yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just thinking, oh, he's okay. just a year and a half old. He's just a youngster. He's not going to be aggressive or anything. Right. And you know, I didn't listen. Didn't listen to my own my own rule, and that is, you can take an animal out of the wild. You never take the wild out of the animal. Number four, Ron. Um, that's going to be the the um, the, the, the the macaw. I think. <laughs> Holy shit. The At macaw number four. Is number four. So it bit through your fingernail, did it not? It almost, it, it like. It went through my fingernail, and the two pieces, the two ends of the jaw met in the middle of my finger to the right. bone. Okay, so yeah, so to the bone. So yes, that would be terribly painful. And how do you shake that off? Like, does that, is that a quick snip, or does it lock in there, and all of a sudden you've got to get, like, pry a no, macaw I, off I, your I, hand? No, no, I freaking shook my hand and shook it off my finger, and it fell on the floor. Uh, number three. Mm. That is going to be the crocodile bite. That's where you met your wife. It was worth it. How did that happen? That was, I was actually handling a crocodile, filming a television commercial, and again, young, overconfident, cocky, and careless. And um, I, got, I got bitten. Um, I will say that the, 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 the post-treatment care was the most painful but as far as the bite itself, at the time it happened, it was painful, but not as painful as number one and two. What was the post-treatment care? What was it? It was just because it, the bites went through my joints. They didn't. I had surgery to take you know little pieces of bone out, but then they had to uh, clean the joints all the time, and they would take a water pick and put it into the joint and flush it with the water pick. Mm. You know, without any anesthesia, it was oh. like I had my finger in a light socket. It was horrible. It was horrible. Number two. Number two, I'm going to go. God, this is a tough one. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the bullet ant. Holy shit! Really? Really? Upset? Yeah. Oh my god, that was that was horrible. It was horrible. It really was. It, it really was. Why? That was just. A, I, 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 Stu Gatz, imagine putting your finger onto um, onto a red hot burner on the oven. And then seeing someone taking a little hammer and keep on hammering it on top of that burner. For how long? How long did that pain last? That went, that, 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 that went on for like, it, 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 the intensity of it went on for close to half an hour. It felt like a full day. It was like, Man. you know where you cry and you have to, you vomit. The pain is so bad, you vomit. It's that bad. And so there's something worse than that. that and this is a <laughs> stunner of a list right now. That, that the bullet ant beats the tiger and the alligator. <laughs> The pygmy rattlesnake. The pygmy rattlesnake. Uh, it, it so uh, that that felt like somebody took a branding iron to the heel of my foot and kept hammering it with a sledgehammer. That was just horrible. How did you land that way? Was it? Did you land right on its head? Did you land on like? No, I stepped on its. I stepped on its body, and it just reached around and bit the heel of my foot. All right, Ron. And I tell you what, it it, it only bit me with one fang, and you know those types of bites are not as, generally speaking, they don't release as much venom as they do, for instance, when they're hunting to eat. They, they want to always conserve their venom. So that was just, I can't imagine what a full bite would have been like. I mean, and this is a pygmy rattlesnake, the smallest of the rattlesnakes here in, in the United States. But, man, I got to tell you something. I was crying like a little wench. I was just, oh, my God, that hurt so bad. Ron, this hasn't happened to you, but where would Ronculus bite land on this <laughs> list? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Central uh, retired. Uh, uh, we must say retired brother, brother, Ronculus. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, no pain, just pleasure there, brother. No nothing pain. but pleasure. Maybe. No pain. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Ron. We will talk to you next week. All right, guys. Have a good one. Take See care. You, Ron.